Well, 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 it's Friday the 1st of November, and this is episode 1931 of 301 Permanently Moved Online, a personal podcast 301 seconds in length, written, recorded, and edited in one hour by me at the JMO. Saints. The saints emerged from a proto Christian tradition. They predate Catholicism by three centuries, originally being any dead Christian or Jew. But very quickly, this evolved into what author of the cult of the saints, Peter Brown, calls the very special dead. The saints have always produced a certain tension throughout the history of Christianity. Many early members of the church uneasy with a faith that had incorporated a necromantic bone cult somewhere along the way. So much so that the last pagan to rule the Roman Empire and nephew to Saint Constantine, Emperor Julian the Apostate, wrote the following after he abandoned Christianity sometime after 351 AD. Quote, you have filled the world with tombs and sepulchres, and yet in your scriptures it is nowhere said that you must grovel amongst tombs. End quote. Some kind of a balance was eventually found by St. Augustine in Predestination of the Saints, where from about 390 AD people began praying to the saints and for the dead. This was later solidified by complexifying the idea of worship, as pagans would point at early Christians and laugh over thou shalt not have any other gods, and ask if he was jealous of the saints. As such, worship was split into two concepts, worship appropriate to human beings and worship reserved for God alone. It's important as it resolves a great deal of the metaphysics around saints. All Saints Day was originally on May the 13th, the day chosen for the dedication of the Pantheon, the temple of all gods, in Rome as a church. But by the 9th century, it had moved from May to November the 1st, with Old Beady telling us, previously on 301 episode 1910, that Boniface IV had originally said four centuries before, quote, that the memory of all the saints might in the future be honoured in the place that had formerly been dedicated to the worship not of gods, but of demons, end quote. In the Christian worldview, both of these things exist, demons and saints. Saints aren't the continuation of pagan gods, however much the atheist bros wish to claim. What they are is the very special dead of a place it took nearly a thousand years before the church took control over the saints list and canonization, etc. Before then, for a long time, they were only venerated locally. What the aforementioned complexification of worship did was to transform earlier pagan experience of an invisible companion, guardian, or diamond, etc., into a human being. Things that people experience and have always existed as part of the human experience. The cult of the saint and its metaphysics provides a framework to utilize them. Listen to Father Seferin of the Orthodox Monastery on the Isle of Mull here. Just Pray to them. I've read somewhere that we don't choose our saints. It is the saints who choose us. I opened episode 1830 on St. Andrew's Day, the following last year. It's St. Andrew's Day. He's a saint that has always been kind to me. I was baptised in his church, the family parish back on the chalk, and now I live on his square in southwest London. We hear the bells from the bell tower, and he's just always been around. The saints are all around us. If you live in the quote-unquote west, you're probably under a saint's parish right now perhaps living on or near a road named after one. Maybe it's your first or middle name and you've never given it much thought, but it's All Saints Day and I think you should. Souls. Tomorrow is All Souls Day or the commemoration of all the faithful departed. All Souls Day is about remembering our ancestors, many of whom were kind, but others did unfathomably horrible things to other people, some both. In 2019, we face climate change, anti-racist struggles, decolonization, biodiversity loss and extinction and many other challenges. These are all intergenerational issues. Some caused by our forebears, some caused by ourselves, all are issues that will continue to affect our descendants. Donna Haraway's Staying with the Trouble is about exploring new ways of reconfiguring our relations to the earth and all of its inhabitants. She posits that learning to stay with the trouble of living and dying together on a damaged earth will provide the means for us to build more livable futures. Staying with the trouble of our ancestors presents a chance to bear witness to them and All Souls Day is as good a day as any to do this. A deep-rooted problem in modern Western society is that it does not favour bearing witness to its past. It certainly instrumentalizes it, but our wider cultural stories of progress and enlightenment demand that we can't. The past has always been a horrible place. It's only a hop, skip and a jump backward that our immediate ancestors were living grim Dickensian childhoods. People romanticize the past, but I'm pretty sure it sucked more ass than primitives and reenactment fantasists think. Everybody's families, no matter how far you go back, will repeatedly encounter horrible people. People who committed all sorts of horrible acts and violations towards other people. They helped lay the groundwork for structural oppressions through ignorance or willful malevolence. You may have even known some of these people in real life, and I can assure you that there are more, and this is true for everyone that has ever lived. Ancestry isn't a value judgment, it just is. And that is, is that our bodies, breathing on this earth today, are a complicated story. All Souls Day for me is about the sometimes tragic, bloodthirsty, sad, and malevolent story of humanity. 
But all of these people loved, laughed, danced and sang, so you can too. And that's why you commemorate the dead.